In this section, we introduce the concept of graphone signals. Graphone signals are signals supported on graphones, and their value lies in that they are limit objects of graph signals. A graphone signal is a pair Wx in which W is a graphone and X is a function mapping the unit interval to the real numbers. The function X in the graphone signal is required to have finite energy. This is equivalent to saying that X belongs to the spade of L2 functions supported in the unit interval. In case you're not familiar with the meaning of finite energy for continuous signals, it just means that the integral of the square of x is bounded. The figure on this slide shows an example of a graphone signal. It involves a function supported in the unit interval and a graphone. As is the case of graphones, graphone signals have dual interpretations. They can be seen as generative models of graph signals, and they can also be seen as limit objects of convergent sequences of graph signals. The use of a graphone signal as a generative model involves the generation of graph signals Sn, Xn, by taking n samples of the graphone signal Wx. The sampling process involves the selection of labels Ui and the sampling of the graphone at these labels. The sampling can be stochastic or weighted, same as when we sample graphs from graphones. The difference is that now we add a sampling of the function x at node labels ui. This generates the values of the graph signal associated with corresponding nodes. An important point to emphasize in this definition is that the sampling of the graphone and the function x must be at the same labels. The sampling must be consistent. To explain graphone signals as limit objects, we need the notion of induced graphone signals. This is a definition that we obtain by leveraging the definition of induced graphones. Formally, every graph signal supported on the graph G induces a graphone signal XG supported on the induced graphone WG. To obtain the induced graphone signal, we consider the regular partition of the unit interval with n nodes, the same partition we use for the induced graphone. We have n subintervals that are of equal width, 1 over n. We obtain the signal component of the induced graphone signal by making xg of u equal to xi for all the arguments u that lie in the ith interval of this regular partition. As we illustrate on the figure on the right, we extend the graph signal value to cover the whole of the ith partition. Recall that the subintervals of the partition are closed on the left and open on the right, except for the last partition that is closed on the left and the right. The graphone components of the induced graphone signal are the graphone is induced by the graph G, which we have already defined. For completeness, we recall that this induced graphone WG assigns the value S sub IJ when the argument U belongs to the partition I sub I and the argument V belongs to the partition I sub J. We can now introduce graphone signals as limit objects of graph signals. A sequence of graph signals GNXN is said to converge to the graphone signal WX if there exists a sequence of permutations i n such that for all motives f we have that. The graph sequences converge to the graphone in the sense of homomorphism densities. Namely, the homomorphism density of the motive f into the graph g n converges to the homomorphism density of motive f into the graphone w for all motives of f. This is just convergence of the graph sequence to the graphone. The novel aspect of this definition is to add convergence towards zero of the L2 norm of the difference between the graphone signal x and the signal x sub pi n of g n. Namely, the graphone signal induced by the graph g n relabeled according to the permutation pi n. We say that the graphone signal wx is the limit of the graph signal sequence g n x n. The permutation is used in this definition to make convergence independent of labels. 
This is not needed in the definition of convergence of best sequences because homomorphism densities are independent of labeling. To retain label independence when comparing signals, we need to incorporate the proper permutations that make the signals as close as possible. This is the same familiar notion of distances modulo permutations, which we encountered in our stability analysis of graph filters and GNNs. Further note that our goal is to compare the vector xn with the function x. This is an apples to oranges comparison that we resolve with the use of the induced Griffon signal. We do not compare the vector xn with x. Rather, we compare the function x sub pi n of gn induced by xn. This is an apples to apples comparison. We compare two functions. The fundamental operation that we perform in graph signals is a multiplication with the shift operator. The analogous of that in graphs, Graphon signals is the application of the integral linear operator TW associated with the Graphon W. This linear operator is a functional that maps Graphon signals to Graphon signals. When applied to the Graphon signal X, the operator TW produces the signal TWX whose value at V equals the integral from 0 to 1 of the product between the Graphon W of UV and the Graphon signal X of U. TW is what we call a Hilbert-Schmidt operator. This is because W is bounded and compact. The most important point to remark is that this operation is conceptually the same as a matrix multiplication. It is, in fact, the limit of a matrix multiplication. Integrals are not sums, but it is always helpful to think of them as sums. Drawing on the proximity of the operator TW with matrix multiplications, we call it here the Graphon shift operator of the Graphon W. Applying the WSO TW to the Graphon signal X has the effect of diffusing the signal X over the Graphon W. We know that this is true intuitively because the definition of the WSO is akin to a matrix multiplication. We will show that it is true formally when we get to studying Graphon filters.